Hello everybody, welcome to a very special Quest for Pixels video series, The Beers of the Kingdom, a Zelda discussion. And today, I'm not alone. I'm joined by one of my good internet buddies, and probably one of your good internet buddies too, Skinny Matt. How's it going, buddy? Hey, what's going on, Tony? How you doing tonight? Today, oh. tonight, whatever time of day it is. Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm excited. We're going to do this Beers of the Kingdom, uh, our little Zelda discussion, and I can't wait to explain to everybody what Beers of the Kingdom is and what it means. So I'm going to jump into that part. Uh, I had an idea when they announced the title of the game, when they said it was Tears of the Kingdom, I made a joke on Twitter. Ha ha ha. We should make a drinking game. Beers of the Kingdom. And then I was like, that's dumb. But you know what wouldn't be dumb is having a beer with a friend and talking about the game and the game isn't out yet so we can do a little bit of a lead up to the game so and because it's called beers of the kingdom well you got to have a beer and you got to have a drink with a friend so today i brought a very special beer it's called in another castle a peach mango ipa and i'm going to crack that open I, usually i'm a pretty uh pretty basic beer drinker i'm not as fancy like matt and, you know, since we we're going to have beers, I thought, let's get Matt on here. So let's see. What did you bring, Matt? See, I brought the basic beer tonight. I bought the uh, Genesee Brewer Series, the Helles Lager, which is a, you know, German style lager, which, which is based off the beer that they made this year that won the governor, New York State Governor's Cup at the Beer Fest this year. So oh, snap. Let's hold on. Let's make this official. Hold on. Make it official. There we go. Yeah, the, there we go. When I decided to make a, a show, a little video series about beer, the first person that came to mind was was Matt. We had to have Matt on it. Well, I don't know anything about beer. Yeah, but you like to drink it. <laughs> All right. By the way, I had to go for the proper glass for the show. Oh, perfect. I went with my, uh, my for Mario. All, for his audio list. Is there going to be an audio version of this? If so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, my Zelda maybe. glass. Could so. be. Uh, we're going, I, and I got my Mario glass here from uh, Super Nintendo World in Japan. Nice. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. So we're gonna have a sip of this. I haven't, I haven't had, I haven't tried this before. I bought it just for this. It'd be nice and sweet, I bet. And thick. Mmm. You know what? What you got? This is actually really nice. It does taste very thick. That's probably the milkshake part of the Old peach and added lactose. That it would be the lactose they add to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. Mangoes, lactose, hops, and yeast. Yeah, I got a... I'll be honest, I've had this one once before, but it's been a minute. It's the last of my four-pack, and it's just a nice German-style lager, so my cup's actually clean. I don't have a lot of bubbles. Nice. Nice gold-yellow color. And when you take a sip, a little, little bit of... Malty, nice and big, brighty flavor with it. Just fantastic. Nothing extremely special, but just a basic Hellas Lager done very well. Oh, that's great. See, with this with this beer, I've wanted to try this. This, this uh, You got ad adjunct. Well, I would have bought it just for the can art. It, well, that's exactly it. Like, I just, I saw this company, their local uh, analog brewing, and I've always wanted to try out their beer, but I couldn't find a place where they were selling it. And uh, I found a few liquor stores where they were selling, all, and they have so many different kind of game-inspired beers, as well as their own little like little brewery tap house that you can go have like some of the beers and have like food. And I guess they have some arcade games there as well. And it's pretty close to my house, so I might have to check like, that I out. I need this to make summer. a trip. Yeah, I need to make a trip to Western uh, Canada in the next year. <laughs> there you go. And then you can come have some <laughs> beers at the uh, Analog Brewing Company. Most definitely. Well, by the way, Genesee is local to me. I mean, the brewery is like 10 minutes from my house. Perfect. So when I go check out that uh, that Museum of Play one of these days and play that giant Donkey Kong machine, we can, uh, yes, we that's, can do that. Yes, that's, that's coming this June. This June. Strong Museum expansion is done this June. It'll be done the week. They're, they'll be closed for like 10 days. That's like the week when I'm on vacation. So it works oh, out perfect. Perfect. But yeah, so we had a beer. We have a beer, and we have uh, the game coming out. Tears of the Kingdom is coming. It, it comes out this week. It'll be this week. I know. Officially this, Friday. this week. Yeah, it's officially this week. It comes out this Friday, and I kind of wanted to just have a beer with a friend. Uh, and today, that friend is you. And I wanted to just hear where your Zelda journey starts. Like, what's your history with the the franchise? That's where I want to start. Well, mine's very stereotypical of an old man my age, where. Um... 
I'm trying to figure. By the time I got an NES, I got one when the power pad was out. Now that you're asking me this, I was probably about 88, 89. But anyhow, my introduction to it was one time friend, honestly my sister's boyfriend at the time, brought his Nintendo over his NES, and the first game I ever saw him play was Castlevania. And then a little bit after that, he was playing Zelda. I'm like, ooh, what's this? So when you're like eight years old playing Zelda, the original one, you're just run, you don't know what you're doing. You're just running on killing stuff. And it just as you learn things from watching him, where I'd find something, learn what Bush started learning, what Bush the burn to get some rupees, or, you know, because you remember he had that the candle. I used to know the pattern through the Lost Woods, and that shows you how bad of a fan I am because I don't remember the pattern and which directions to go because it's been a minute. <laughs> But, you know, we're just running around like that. Then eventually, by the time I was probably 11 or 12 was the first time I actually beat the game. But, of course, there was a lot of help from him. And then if anybody remembers, there used to be that old Nintendo guide, that black book. It was a walkthrough guide for all these original NES games. It had all the maps for, like, Zelda, Metroid. Told you how to beat the fighter, the different boxers, and punch out. I don't know. Tony, I don't know if you remember that. I don't even remember who put that out. Oh, Nintendo that was... put that out or what? Oh, maybe That's, that was... It's, it's been a minute. Maybe that was the uh, how to beat Nin- like there was like a unofficial guide called like how to beat yeah, Nin- Nintendo or something like that. I just remember it was black, like you know the black, you know the old black Nintendo labels, and then across I want to say around the bottom there's like pictures of some of the games, but it had tons of different games in it. So that's how I started, and then beat Zelda two eventually. I actually think that game is not as bad as everyone says it is. Is it still the worst Zelda? Probably, Maybe. but it's still not a bad game. It's a little tough. Um, so there was that, and then my arguably my one A one B game would you know first off I never had a Game Boy, I never had a through two I never had a Game Boy Advance two DS three DS so all those handheld Game Boys I never played. So keep that in mind. So I when I'm when I'm speaking Zelda for me it's just home console. Um, so you know Zelda two. Managed to get through that. I did like the RPG mechanics of that, to be honest. It's just that curve getting through the one tunnel at the beginning when you have to have the lantern and blah, 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 blah. And here, the candle. Uh, it's, it's, it's been that long. <laughs> but then you got, you know, like my 1A, 1B, probably my favorite 2D Zelda is Link to the Past. I remember when I eventually got a Super Nintendo for that one, I beat that game over at a friend's house. We beat it over a weekend. So that's probably my favorite, um, arguably my favorite Zelda. That's why I call it the 1A, 1B. Because I have a favorite 2D and a favorite 3D, and they're both pretty much whatever mood I'm in determines on which one I like more. Right. So you can, by the time you, I answer it now, it's one. By the time I finish this beer, it'll be another. Fair. And so you, tasty soap. you've had a, and then you've you've played a bunch of the 3D Zelda games as well. Yeah. Um. Eventually, I never owned a 64. So, um. But I did have access because, you know, 64 came out in 96. I started college in the fall of 98. I did have access to an N64 between my roommates. And then back then, and it used to be you get out of class. If you went to class, <laughs> um, you go down the hall. Someone's got the door open. Someone's playing Smash, <laughs> GoldenEye, Zelda or whatever, you know, just whatever. So I did end up playing uh, Ocarina of Time. Uh, got to play through that and beat that. Um Majora's Mask I played a little, but that but that time limit it gave me too much anxiety to be honest. I couldn't get I couldn't do it. You know what? Especially I, then I I haven't I haven't gone back to try it though. I'll, I'll be honest on that one. I have a with Majora's Mask especially like I ended up playing that on the 3DS when it came out, and they uh, made a lot of improvements to it. And, but I just I, it wasn't for me. I didn't like the time pressure at all. <laughs> I like to yeah, explore I and I, like un, you know relax and figure things out. But that just like kept kept me like stressed out <laughs> I don't know. yeah because it's like i want to go see what's over here no you ain't got time to do that son yeah um so wow my mind's blanking so let's see after the 64 ones we got gamecube i when i got a gamecube i bought my gamecube probably 2022 it was the time when they dropped them down to 50 bucks and they were also giving you a game for free so the game i picked was uh wind waker you know it was very Everyone forgets it was very controversial back then. It was. It looks like a cartoon. A lot of the, quote, hardcore gamers hated it because of the way it looked. And we can all have that discussion how, ironically, it was probably the best choice they made because all those, quote, realistic-looking games back on the PS1 and the GameCube back then, or is that PS2, actually, um, they did real graphically. They don't really hold up that well. Um, to be honest, we all know that. But yeah. I remember, like... 
I remember the first time I plugged that in and the point very early in the game when you have to sneak through after you've been kidnapped and you're like hiding in the barrel and stuff. That was just crazy because you didn't have your sword yet. And the I can't think of the goblin. It was a the goblin or was it a moblin? Anyhow, they ended up, you know, finding you and you get thrown back in the jail cell until eventually you go get your sword. That was just a really cool technique. They, uh, not technique. Um, I can't think mechanic that they threw in there. But that game is really cool, and I think the cartoon art style works best, because I'll be honest, I still think that is arguably the darkest Zelda game they've made, especially at the end, which, spoilers, when you put that damn sword in Ganon's head, <laughs> just, just, yeah. Where was he Ganondorf at that point? It's been a while. Anyhow. So, yeah. And then so you, was like, and then you did you jump into Breath of the Wild like right when it came out on Switch, or were you one of those people that played it on the Wii U, you sneaky bugger? I was a Wii U first because I didn't have a Switch at launch. Oh really? So I could I couldn't score a Switch. So the day it came out, my wife came home like what day that what that like not the day it came out, but like the next day because I couldn't get one. My wife came home. She ran to the store for stuff. She's like, I could run the target. She had to get some stuff. And she came home and handed me the Wii U version of uh, Breath of the Wild the second day it was out. So so I originally beat that game on this Wii U first before I beat it on the Switch. Oh, wow. See, I didn't know that. I was just making a joke to see if you were one of those Wii U uh, tricksters. Yeah, I am I guess. Just, I, it was not intended. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I will tell the story all the time. I, I was this close an inch from getting a, a Switch on launch because I wasn't able to secure one. Because when they went up for pre-order, I was out of town. And with the job I had at that time, I had to travel quite a bit. But the problem was, was they didn't give us a company card. So a lot of times I was like fronting the money and I was getting reimbursed. But they were like at one point they owed like owed me like almost three thousand dollars and for travel expenses. Part of the reason why I don't work there anymore. Um, but I was going through a law like that where they owed me a bunch of money and I just did not have the funds to pre-order one. Right. Um, eventually, I once it came out, I started to get the like it was one of those things I'd get the funds but they wouldn't be in stock. And then like, I remember for a fact, the furnace went out and had to replace the computer on it. The main board on the, on the furnace. That was a $900 fix. Well, guess what? Buy switch money. Yeah. And then it ended up, you know, but then I didn't have the money. Then I'd find them on the shelf. I'm like, come on. But I did get one after Splatoon 2 came out. It was probably August. When did Splatoon 2 come out? Yeah. I think it was like July, July. or August, something like that. July, yeah. I got one late July, early August, somewhere in there. So I did manage to get one. And then and you the said you replayed I, it again on the Switch? Eventually, because uh, what I did is I, uh, when they, at one point, if you remember, after it was out for like a year, they dropped it down to like 40 bucks every once in a blue moon for the physical yeah. copy. So I grabbed one then to double dip. That's okay. the only reason I double dipped, because at 40 bucks, you couldn't go wrong with that. Um, but, you know, they didn't even get into the fact that, you know, playing the, uh, the Wii one, um, the GameCube Wii. Yeah, the Twilight um, was it Twilight, Twilight Princess? Princess? Yeah. And did you play Skyward Sword when it came out originally as well? Or I yeah, I bought Skyward Sword when it came out with the gold the edition with the gold control with oh, yeah. or yeah. not nunchuck with the gold Wiimote. Did they all have that or was it just certain ones? I think it was just certain I don't ones remember. at it. I remember I had the one with that and it also had the twenty fifth anniversary C D with the Zelda Orchestra. Mm hmm well, Yeah, that's... that that gold Wiimote sitting over there in this container under my TV. Oh, you that's still have it. 15, 15. Oh, yeah. It's the one that was my primary used one. Oh, that's awesome. Did, so when you were playing, what, what were your thoughts of Breath of the Wild when you first played through it? Did, were you were you taken by the open nature of it? Or were, were you kind of like, oh, this is different than what we're used to? Yes. Uh, I knew it was different. I love the fact that it was different. But like I was kind of worried because a lot of open world games prior to that, let's be honest, they would just put a map and put 50 icons on the map. Like, here, go here, go do this. This one, it was like, we recommend you go here, but go do whatever the hell you want. Um, I mean, once you get off the Great Plateau, it, it doesn't matter what you do. And they didn't tell you where to go. They didn't mark it on the map. You had to mark it yourself. So, yes, that's and when it kind of I, I, I really think Breath of the Wild turned. I'm open world games it really hate to say open them up but it really did because <laughs> you play an assassin's tree game it's like go here here's a checkbox and they just put all the icons and go find it did other games do it first potentially but none of them were really this known and successful mainstream if you will right 
Um, and how long did you play? Like, do you have an idea of your play play time for how long it took you to play through it? I don't know. I was playing it a lot because when I first the first time I beat it, I I didn't use any guides. And my goal was I did all 120 shrines. Oh, wow. So I did all I did all the shrines and everything. before. I did all the shrines before I beat the game. Korok seeds once I found out there's 900 and some 90. That wasn't going to happen. But I did manage to do all the shrines. Bef- I after I did the third. Um, why am I not thinking Divine Beast? After I did the third Divine Beast is when I actually went hardcore looking for the rest of those shrines. And it took a while because it was some some of the stuff were the ones where the um, the characters are kind of hint to go here. I mean, some of them are just a shrine sitting right there. So and I yeah, think the hardest the hardest one was probably uh, the first time you go into the. Um, see, now that we're talking, my mind is completely blanking. What was the um, when you just have to fight the. Um, small the robotic um the small guardian? guardian things yeah what were those they were challenge of oh yeah i know what, i know what you yeah mean, exactly but i don't, but I don't the, remember you know, what it's called the first time you go in the one and you don't you're not properly equipped and it's like the third level when you're like oh crap get your ass beat yeah and then yeah but i'll tell you what one of my favorite things in that game was once i figured out you could parry the regular guardian attack to practice i literally went and got a bunch of pot lids and went down into the um near central hyrule where all the decayed guardians were near that right. tower and i literally went there with nothing but pot lids and just practice pairing and timing the attacks from different distances and it was just kind of cool the fact that once i've learned that i can do that because one i can one of the I think someone in hatina village hints that to you one of the guards or wait, no, what's the for Hatino? Gee, it's been so long. You know, I know people are yelling at their screens right now at me for not remembering these names. Um, but they kind of hint that you can parry their uh, laser attacks. But once I started doing that, it was that's when it was on. That's when the game really clicked because it used to be you would just run for your life as soon as you hear that little piano going off. Yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, for me, I kind of have uh, I have a weird history with Zelda uh, growing up. You know, for like the NES, I didn't play any Zelda at all. I didn't, I didn't have any interest in it. I was just like totally into Mario, and I'm like, why would I play this boring RPG looking game? Even though it's, you know, it's more of a of an action adventure, but it just didn't. It had no interest in me. Like I had no interest in it at all, except for uh, Link's Awakening. I must have borrowed it from somebody, and I played that on the Game Boy. And that one really spoke to me for some reason. I think it was because it was it felt more personal because it was on like a handheld. And like as a kid, you're just like, this is you handheld in the game. Like, and I'm pretty sure it was probably because there was like Goombas in it and Chain Chomps in it. Yeah. That probably brought me to be like, oh, what's this? I should check it out. And I remember now, really. Did you play with headphones on or did you have it going through the little speaker? Oh, I had I had headphones with uh, my Game Boy for sure. So, yeah, that kind of just bring you right in there with the music and and it was kind of like a sad, happy, wistful kind of game. Like it had like a really, a very cool like theme to it, which I didn't really pick up as a kid, but thinking about it when I was older, I could definitely see that. And then Link's Awakening looked, or um, yeah, A Link to the Past always looked cool to me, but it just, I, I still didn't play that as a kid either. And then I skipped a lot of <laughs> Zeldas because I went, I didn't have a 64. I didn't have a GameCube. I was all PlayStation then being like, I want to play Metal Gear. I want to play uh, Resident Evil, you know, like, and I was one of those people who are like, oh, this Wind Waker looks like so childish. Why would anybody want to play that? Because at, at that moment, I didn't, I wasn't into that. Right. And like, yeah. of course, looking back and when they re-released it, I played it and loved it. It's, it's like you said, great art style, holds up super well way better than polygonal stuff that was going on in the other other consoles at the time be honest you played the re-release the remaster so you didn't have to deal with all the sailing quests finding those triforce pieces that was a slog yeah i i'm glad that i got the uh more refined version i guess but yeah and then and then like i said i played majora's mask on the 3ds um and then at this point i was realizing that that 3d um Zelda games didn't really click with me as much as the the top down 2D chibi kind of style did. I find those ones connected with me a lot more. Uh, I played A Link Between Worlds before I played A Link to the Past, and I loved wow. it. I loved it. 
And I was like, this is great because like it has all the, it has like freedom, but yet you're still guided and uh, like being able to attack the dungeons in any order, being able to like buy what you needed or like get what you needed from the shopkeeper or whatever. That was just so, it felt revolutionary, but like classic, but new. So I really enjoyed that. And then it was after that, when uh, we started doing quests for pixels, Sheldon said to me, like, you need to play Link's, Link to the Past. And we dual streamed it with um, with our Super Nintendo uh, minis. We plugged okay. them in and dual streamed it at the, at the same nice. time. And I realized, like, this is a really great game. Like, I got frustrated in a bunch of places and I used, like, some walkthroughs. But I was like, this is this is really a great game. And then yeah, one. And then we got to um, then I got to the, the Switch era. Right. And we um, got Link or uh, Breath of the Wild. And when I put that in, like that's that was the game that was like, OK, now this is going to be my 3D Zelda. You know, like the other ones didn't really hit for me. I didn't really complete many of them. I usually got pretty far in them and kind of just stopped. Uh, like I played them on the on the Wii. Uh, yeah, the Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, but those I couldn't stand the waggle controls for stuff. It just drove me crazy. <laughs> so it always like even Super Mario Galaxy, which is known to be like so, you know, impactful. Everybody loves it. I just couldn't get past the waggle. Like it's just like waggle, waggle. I just you just should have just played the GameCube version then. I know I, I could have, but I didn't. When he was still a lefty. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and they switched them all up and made him a righty, so instead of a lefty, which is kind of weird. But yeah, so we got to Breath of the Wild. And I got my Switch and my copy of Breath of the Wild. And I, I played most of that game in handheld mode because I don't know if you remember this, but when people first started getting their Switches, a lot of them noticed that their docks were bent inwards and people were getting yeah. their screen scratched up. And when I got my Switch, I opened it up and my dock was like almost like they're, the tips were almost touching. <laughs> and, you know, you don't oh, touch wow. the tips. But so like what I did is I grabbed a, a big uh, kid's book and I put it in between it and left it there for like two weeks because i'm like no i'm not putting it in there until i'm sure that it's bent back and i'm not going to scratch the screen so i played most of it breath of the wild in handheld and i thought it was great and then i put it on the screen when i got to like a battle that was about like i think i was fighting like one of the calamity ganons um for the first time and i'm like you know what this deserves to be on the big screen and i put it on there and i was just like in awe i'm like oh my gosh it looks so great on the tv <laughs> like i really enjoyed it on the on the small screen but just like playing it primarily there and then blowing it up it was just like oh this is great and then i played the rest of it like that um when i played breath of the wild i turned off the map right away i didn't want the map and i just went in blind and just started wandering around and then I got so close to the end and they kept telling me to take pictures um, for memories or whatever. And I'm like, what? Take pictures with what? What is? <laughs> and I'm like, do I just press the <laughs> screenshot button? What do they want me to do? And then I and then I'm like, I got to look this up because I'm almost on my way to Ganon. But I couldn't go there yet until you there forgot was, on your Sheikah slate. Yeah, there was some there was some kind of uh, some sort of armor or whatever you needed to get it as an upgrade. And it was in the same spot that you're supposed to get this camera that I never did. And and most people went there like right after you got off the Great Plateau because it was like th the next spot that you'd go like go down to. But I must have just wandered off in a completely opposite direction and didn't get there till the very end. Yeah. See, the, the thing that was great with Bre uh, Breath of the Wild is that was the f first off you got to love the fact that a Wii U port won Game of the Year that year. Um, yeah, true. Uh, two, you could tell that was built for the Wii U originally. Everybody yeah. remembers all the delays, but you can tell with the menu system, they were going to make it a menu change on the fly with the pad while you play on the screen. But the biggest thing for me was so awesome was after all the years of listening to different content creators and watching content creators, that was the first time I really started communicating with groups. And at the time, let's be honest, it was when Bobby Pauls was doing stuff, Nintendo Guru. And I just will never forget, after I got the game, second or third night, one day going in the work, and I was listening to something, and I was listening on the way in, kind of when I got in the office, and it was just like, I'm dragging, I was up way too late, I'm dragging ass, I'm sitting there, I got my, I had a yoga co Yoda coffee mug with coffee, and I just got a picture sitting there next to my laptop at work saying, yep. Coffee's helping me get through after another um, staying up too late playing Zelda. And that was the first time I started communicating with any podcast that I've ever listened to. If anyone anyone he hears this, 
I'm in around in a lot of those podcast communities. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. So, so that was that was like your that was kind of like your entry in was was posting about playing Zelda. That's really cool. And then and then I had a roommate from college that I hadn't talked to in probably ten years, not even maybe maybe six years. And he just texted me out of the blue after he started playing that. And our conversations were just about Zelda, so that was kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so someone you're... I haven't talked to in years, and yeah, we were he, every about every other week, you know, just because of his work schedule and mine. Kind of got back in touch with an old friend. Oh, that's crazy! See, look, this look. I didn't even know when I invited you on here that, I... that Zelda has so many. <laughs> this Breath of the Wild has so many uh, impactful moments for you. That's great. And now you got another one. You get to have a beer with a friend while talking about Zelda. I know. I'll... Cheers, Cheers to, to the kingdom. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't lay into the pun at first. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's awesome, Matt. I'm really glad that uh, you shared those sort of stories. Um, so you ended up getting a special edition, maybe? Yes. It's actually at my office at work right now because I didn't want to drag it in and have somebody, you know, my <laughs> oldest son kind of try to take it already. Oh, yeah. Oh, Plus, I, I'm hesitant. And I know I'm going to have to set it up to transfer data over because I'm not going to do a full blown transfer uh, transfer. I saw my OG only other oh, the, uh, the only other switch I have is my OG switch. So, you know, that was from the original release window. It's right. the old, you know, it's starting to sound like a PS4. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fan goes nice off, and so. loud like that, like a classic <laughs> PS4. Yeah. So yes. I also got I picked one up as well. I got the box right here. Um, I opened up the other day. It looks so much better in person than it does in the pictures. <laughs> like, remember those leaked photos and everyone's like, that doesn't look very good. Um, that's going to be fake. It looks, it looks too cheesy. Yeah. So like, I like every, everything looks really great. The dock is, oh, that's backwards. The dock is amazing. Uh, and this joy con's really good. I always had an issue with this, the, the, is yes, that the left, that, the left, the one? left. I always had an issue with it that. It seems to be a general consensus. It seems to look a little bit better in, in, uh, in person, but I think they would have just been way better off just putting like a Triforce on there or something. Um, but yeah, you can see on the back of this box here, like oh, it's just. I mean, they could have they could have put a uh, buff can and then everybody's thirsting over on it. Oh man, if they only knew, you know, if they only knew. But I have these other Zelda Joy Cons as well. These for the Skyward Sword ones. So I oh, I never got those. I haven't tried them on the. Uh, I might be able to mix and match something nice with with these guys on there, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I have so many switches now. This is switch number seven. And um, oh. <laughs> I, I pre, so I opened it up and I was going to like, you know, I, I, I don't change any of them to like transfer all my data over. I just like re-download what I want to play and just go that way. Yeah. Because it's, it's a lot less of a headache, I find. And because I bounce through them, like I, I this is my go-to one. It's the, uh, the Splatoon one. And then I got these hoary uh, split Joy-Cons on there. I did one Pikachu and one Gengar. <laughs> so yeah, but what I'm doing with the Zelda one is I pre-downloaded the game the other day and I said, you know what? I have enough switches that this is just going to be a switch for that game. <laughs> nice. Talk about frivolous. That it's just going to be one <laughs> one special edition <laughs> switch for only one game. one game. Yeah. That's that's one thing I'd like to do, but I'm going to keep the other switches, the family one and my other ones, the cuz this will be my first OLED, obviously. So that's going to be the docks can be over here where I'm sitting at my desk here. And that's going to be one that I take with me if I go anywhere. Cause as oh, much nice. like I got, I actually have to go to a conference for work for a week in June. Maybe I'll still be playing Zelda. Um, originally I took the 12th off, but I decided not to because my son's rooms like over there, we're going to great wolf lodge on the following Monday. Ooh. So I'm saving the, so I'm, decided to not take that day off and but i've got the physical version ordered and i just from best buy and i just got the confirmation to make sure my stuff's good to go for the prepay the pre-order and it's all good to go i'm getting the art print that i mean when i pre-ordered it it was still only 60 bucks nice. so that's how long ago i pre-ordered it yeah before like, so all the delays the pre-orders are up <laughs> that was i mean it's been i could probably look it up it's been it's obviously been over a year um so I'm looking forward to play that. They open up at 10, 10 o'clock, but I, I get off work at 3.30. I'm going to get off work, swing by on my way home from work, unless I end up working 
if I'm in the field near the store, I can pick it up. But I don't know what my skill. I have no idea. If I can do that, great. Uh, but so I'm, I'm pick it up, start playing that night. I would like to take it with me for the car ride, the Great Wolf Lodge. But with three kids taking a switch and a car ride is a bad idea because then when we get to the hotel, they may only want to play. So I'm just gonna have to not take it for three days. Yeah, I'm I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a similar situation actually. Uh, I got a digital low, so I'll be able to play it. It'll be Thursday night at it's ten o'clock Zelda. my I gotta time. Have, I gotta have it physical it's zelda i know i might get i might get a physical copy too just because to add it to the shelf but uh i wanted to play it right away and we're going away on yeah we're going away on monday actually no sunday night which is um oh, or wow. sunday day which is uh, mother's day we're going to go yep. to uh jasper park lodge we're going to go to the mountains and we're going to stay in the fairmont hotel like we usually do our annual um mountains trip so we're going to do that this that weekend as well. So I'll be playing probably, you know, a little bit on Thursday night, but not too much because I'll have to go to sleep to get yeah. up for work. And then uh, yep. we'll play. I'll play a little bit probably on Friday. And and then the Saturday, Sunday will probably be packed with uh, getting ready to go. But hopefully I can get some good yeah. time in there and, and see what it's all about. Now, going forward here, do you you've been staying away from like any kind of spoilers or coverage or anything like that correct the only thing i've watched is the trail i've watched the stuff that nintendo released other than that i've been radio silent awesome yeah i i've been the same way uh i've been watching I, i've checked out a couple of previews because they don't go into to too much with those but um uh, i haven't even touched those except the one where uh nintendo had shown the, the new mechanics which everybody i think watched that at least yeah. anyone who's watching or listening to this definitely has. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, yeah, the, I've, I've watched mostly, like, it was really that last trailer that really did it for me, that official last trailer, where he just, like, oh. The, and you get that that bigger story trailer that's three minutes long. That one gave me chills when that came on. Like, it actually gave me chills. I was so excited. And now I've just, like, in the last, like, two or three days, I've tried not to think about it too much because, you know, I'm an adult. We can wait for things. It's hard, but we can I do know. it. <laughs> and uh, I just got so excited. We so can now do it. I'm... We can do it. <laughs> We're so close. But yeah, so now I'm like, I'm peak. I'm peak excited right now. So I can't wait. Except I can't wait. But the only thing I'm worried about is I, if anyone saw on Twitter today, the day that we're recording, which is a Sunday night. Earlier today, I had a real a realization. I'm kind of worried because one of the things I did not like in Skyward Sword is the Silent Realm. And do you remember what you collected when you were in the oh, Silent yeah. Realm? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh my you goodness. were collecting like tears, essentially. Tears. <laughs> yes. I hope we don't have to do no stealth Silent Realm stuff in Tears of the Kingdom. I'm assuming it's going to reference to the same tears because it's from, you know, but we don't know. It's speculation, but I. I don't like stealth. I just can't do it. So, uh, yeah, I think I think um, being a, a successor to Breath of the Wild, it'll probably be like you can do it stealthily, or you can just create some crazy just, machine, or just burst right through the door. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping there's no. You have to sneak around those guardians or whatever. What were they called? What's that? What they're called? Those little ghost-looking apparitions, because then they the alarm oh, yeah. would go off they and they'd see and they chase after you. Yeah, I know what you're talking no. about. I'm, I'm you know, bad with that too. I don't, I don't know any of the characters. If we, if we <laughs> had this, if we would had this, if we had this conversation two days ago, I could have probably answered it. <laughs> so now I've got to hit the Google, the Googles. Yeah, look it up. I'm, I'm curious what the. I don't remember what those guys were called. Silent either. Realm, Skyward Sword. Let's see here. Yeah, I know where they are. I just I'm going to the Legend of Zelda wiki, folks. Yeah, this makes up, great podcast. No, right look it up here. while I have the rest of this delicious beer that I actually really, really like. I'm surprised. It's more tasty notes on that. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't explain it as good as you can. I'm not. It has a nice mouth feel. I don't know. <laughs> feels good in the mouth. Don't clip that part out. They are referred to as watchers. Hmm. Watch it along with those and then there was also guardians the guardians were the ones with oh, the big the, the watchers bigger, were yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the watchers are the ones that kind of po like that would fly back and forth yeah and then the guardians were the big ones the ones with, with that could walk yeah. with the big sword things see we have to, have to look, it look up. at that no, no that's good now we know now we know well that's great i'm i'm really excited what are is the, is there anything specific before we wrap it up is there anything specific about tears of the kingdom that has you excited like what 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 what's getting matt hyped honestly right now is the fact i know nothing about it 
That's fair. That, it's, I mean, despite the fact when, even when Breath of the Wild came out, we all saw footage of the Great Plateau because it was played at, what was it, E3, Gamescon, yeah. one of the one of the ones. Yeah. It was playable and everyone had hands on, but it was, there was so much stuff there and you're like, whoa, and only to see how much there really was. They have gone complete. Here's, the only thing they gave us are the new mechanics and that's it. We don't even know if the bomb. I, actually, I don't think he has a, a Sheikah slate, but the, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to play out because the one thing I've noticed is if you watch the last trailer, sometimes he's dressed in his Breath of the Wild yeah. outfit, and sometimes he's in a more of an ancient style toga type thing. So I don't know where the, and sandals. So I don't know where this is going. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm. I feel the same way, uh, and I think this one's going to have. I, you know, I'm kind of hoping that it has more of a, like a story to it than kind of Breath of the Wild kind of did. Breath of the Wild was a little bit flimsy on the story. It was kind of like, yeah, you know, go anywhere. That it, was the the motto of it, right? But and, if if you didn't find the memories, you had zero story. Exactly. And someone who didn't find the camera until very at the end of it, I had very little story to go off of. <laughs> but I didn't care because I was having the time of my life just running around, exploring, seeing something over there, running over there. And I feel like the Switch is Nintendo with the Switch life cycle is like, here's the mantra, you know, with Breath of the Wild, it's you can go anywhere, climb anything, uh, you know, um, with Animal Crossings, it's you want to you want to build stuff outside, well, build stuff on the whole island, change the island, whatever, do what you want to do. And, you know, um, Super Mario Odyssey, you want to jump like a you want to walk like a Goomba, possess the Goomba. Now you're a Goomba. And I feel like the next evolution of that for the, for these games, these big franchises is um, now it's going to be solve the puzzle any way you want to solve it. And that's really exciting to me because I'm someone who always builds something wrong but ends up getting the same solution as everybody else. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so I can do it bad and still have a good time. I'm going to clip that one right there. I'm going to do it bad and still have a good time. <laughs> but that's great. I'm glad you were able to join me with this uh, first video uh, series for Q for P. We're back trying to do some stuff, you know, got some brainstorming going on. And uh, I'm really glad that you were the first one to join me on here. I might have you on again after we play the game and see how your uh, thoughts have changed and maybe <laughs> what what kind of adventures you've gotten into in uh, in the kingdom. Uh, but uh, Matt, before we head out, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where they can find you. As for if you're looking for me, uh, you can find the podcast I'm on, the Backlog Busters, which are way overdue to record. It's usually a monthly podcast. We're pushing two months. Um, find out all your favorite podcast catchers or uh, on Twitter at Backlog underscore Busters. You can find us there where you're supposed to beat your play your old games and work on your backlog. But I'm the, I'm a backlog builder, not a backlog buster. You can also find me most Sunday nights. Uh, it's a little off now that my PC is trying to be built for, for a month. Um, but I do stream on Twitch at on twitch.tv slash skinny Matt K. Most Sundays you can find me there around 9 p.m. ish Eastern. Uh, also, for any news like that, really best place to follow me is just on Twitter at skinny Matt K. Perfect. And yeah, you can find me at Tony Baker 87 on pretty much everything. I go by that everywhere. But mostly on Twitter, we'll direct you to where we are and what we're doing. But with that, thanks for joining us on the first episode. Thanks again, Matt. And uh, cheers to the kingdom. Cheers. <laughs>